So you might be thinking, oh, this accessibility thing, that means that websites are boring and they all look the same. Well, that is not true. Websites don't have to be boring to be accessible. There's so many examples. One of my favorites is from Simply Accessible, which is an accessibility company. They rebranded a few years ago, and their website is just beautiful. It's well architected, so all the content is really easy to digest. Um, their brand is really memorable and recognizable. It's accessible. Um, and they have these really cute illustrations that sort of tie it all together. And so they are doing something really well there. Another example is uh, a few iterations ago of the Target corporate website that I got to work on. And working on this site was really cool because Target's brand is so recognizable and fun to work with. And this site, I got to uh, prototype accessibility and responsive design together early in the process, and it made it really successful. Because every interaction, I got to play with the ramifications of accessibility and responsive design together so that then it could be highly interactive. Um, and so it doesn't have to be boring at all. But the earlier you start, the better. So accessibility can be super cutting edge at the same time. Like It doesn't have to be a static website in the traditional sense with full page refreshes and things. So I'm going to play a video for you of uh, an education platform um, by Blackboard where it's a super modern JavaScript heavy application with layers and they've managed accessibility really well. So I want to show you what that looks like and sounds like. Because as for education in particular, people with disabilities need to get an education just like everyone else. They need to get jobs just like everyone else and have those opportunities. So for these platforms, it's critical that they be accessible. Ten. You are currently on HTML content. To enter the web area, press Control, Option, Shift, Down Arrow. Link. Skip to main content. Complimentary three items. Heading level one. Courses. Banner two items. Courses filter. Pop-up button. Current courses, selected, button main courses, one item, link, meeting management. You are currently on a link, heading level one, meeting management, banner two items, link, skip to main content, main course visited, link, content, navigation main one item, link, calendar, link, discussions, link, gradebook, link, messages, menu pop-up link, roster view everyone in your course, complimentary six items, courses open students can access this course, pop-up button, join session, pop-up button, more options for collaborate, pop-up button, link, Books and tools. Main for more options for course content. Pop up button. Add new content above new document. Collapse button. Add new content above new document. Expand it button. Visited link. Create. You are heading level one. Create item. Banner one item. Course content items. Selected expanded. Tab main courses one item. You are link. Folder. Visited link. Document. New document. Edit text. You are currently on a text field. To enter text in this field, type. Capital A E L F up space L U D N T space L F exclaim, conf, hello fluent conf selected. All right, so that's a screen reader. If you've never seen one operating before, that is VoiceOver, which if you have a Mac or an iPhone, you have a screen reader. If you have an Android device, you have a screen reader in your pocket. And what I really like about Blackboard's application is that even though they have these layers opening on top, they send your focus to that new layer uh, for a few reasons. One, so it, it's announced in a screen reader. And two, so that your keyboard focus is in the right part of the app. You're not stuck on a previous layer. They also did a really good job of labeling their icon buttons. Although, admittedly, they could probably benefit from some text labels under those icons. At the very least, for a screen reader user, an icon button explained what it was for, like a calendar. And then further, they had similar icon buttons where they had multiple instances of the same icon, but they did different things. And they were all labeled uniquely, so that a screen reader user would be able to tell one settings button from another. And when I added new content, there was a little plus button. And it, it told you where you were in the, the hierarchy of documents. It would say, add new content above new document. So it was sort of spatially aware when they used templating to create this application. They were actually looking at the content around it to make it usable and actually intuitive to someone with a screen reader.